paranormal Karen. She's so spooky, paranormal Karen. Funny too, paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah, cha cha cha. Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. This is like psychic episode. I have a great interview coming up with uh, my friend Melissa, who is a fabulous tarot reader, just got done with something at the Omega Institute, teaches. We're going to talk tarot with her. And also, I got a new segment coming up right now. Uh, my friend Dave is on the phone with me. I'm going to tell you who he is in a second. Uh, we're doing tarot and astrology in this episode. And while I have your attention, while everyone's like, ooh, we can't wait to hear it. Um, don't forget to leave me a five-star review wherever you listen to the podcast. Um, I also want to say thank you so much to the people that are sending suggestions of what you want to talk about, what you hear, or just thanks. I'm learning so much on the podcast. I love it. Send me an email at paranormalkaren at gmail.com or karenrontowski at gmail.com. All the suggestions for uh, folks you want to hear are working out great. I'm beyond thrilled. But today I'm adding uh, segments to the podcast that are going to be continuous. Like I think we're going to have Calvin Von Crush check in with us with his, he's always doing something crazy. So he's going to have like a little five minute, 10 minute check-ins all the time. And today's check-in is, uh, you all know Sonia King, the animal communicator, K- communicator. This is her husband, Dave, who is, uh, and Dave, let me, first of all, he's brilliant. Okay. Uh, I, I talked to him about everything and we, he has taken on astrology in the past few years. And a lot of people don't understand. They think it's the little thing they read in the newspaper or it's some airy fairy. Astrology is really hard. Like that's why Kepachi, the guy I watch his tape all the time, he was an engineer. There is so much work that, that gets put into it. And Dave is the guy to do it. Dave, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. You, yeah, I, uh, people don't know. I'm constantly like, Dave, can you send me this? Can you send me a chart? What's going on? And you're so good at this, but I feel like you're a perfect. It's not just to come on here and, uh, have people hear what's going on. You're actually going to teach us a little bit each time so we can start to understand our own astrology and our own chart. So I thank you for that. So folks, pay attention. Maybe make some notes. We're going to jump right in. Dave, uh, first question for you. Uh, what exactly is astrology? I know I explained it like it looks like it's something you read in the newspaper. We don't know. Tell us what exactly is astrology? Sure. Um, well, there are a few answers I could say that are kind of canned and simple, but using a so-called simple definition of the word doesn't quite get the essence of what astrology is all about. However, I did find a thought-provoking description given by a man named Robert Zoller um, that I like to use whenever I get this question. It goes like this. Astrology is the study of um, how the various forms that are contained within the light of consciousness or monad affect the very substance of mind and cause the multiple or manifold experiences of life. Wow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. But you know what? It was funny in the beginning. I was like, oh, you lost me. And then in the end, I was like, oh, I get it. What is, when you say monad, that's probably something that people haven't even heard yet. What are you talking about there? Okay. Um, so the monad can be described, um, another thing by Webster's, and I'll paraphrase this real quick. Um, it's like an, un- it's like an elementary, unextended individual spiritual substance where material properties are derived. And I'll give you some examples. Okay. So an, abs- an absolute simple entity is one. Plato okay. called it the creature itself. And let's see, others from the past, they've used terms like the first form, splendor, proteus, phanies, uh, likened to the sun, God, I am. Um, the Eastern philosophy calls it the supreme spirit. And there's a, a 700 verse Hindu song called uh, Bhagavad Gita or Song of God that says it was the highest imperishable self. That's Monad. And, and that's a book, by the way, 700, uh, 700 uh, verse hymn. 
How long is church? Yeah. How long is church in India? <laughs> Jeez, Louise! Uh, my God, I thought I thought Amazing Grace got long. Holy cow! Uh, right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so it's sort of the universe. What we think of the universe, the all one power, the supreme spirit. Exactly. Great. Okay. And and um, so that is so it's based on the effects from that. Is that how you're saying that? It, it is. Um, so there, there are some examples that come from, you know, it's like a threefold manifestation. So a unity that can't be penetrated, that's self-contained without form. So picture a triangle. At each corner, we have one of three separate but truly linked substances. So in one corner, we have God, another man, and the third is creation or self microcosm and macrocosm okay and in 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 tarot that would be conscious subconscious superconscious right maybe sure sure so um to to clearly see the relationship to the monad a person needs to remember and i kind of get a a little bit philosophical here You, you have to think it's impossible for there to be more than one center of the world and if God's at the center, that man is also at the center. So then both God and man must coincide. Plus, the basis of where they coincide must be the human heart. So that's also at the center of the world. The the unity of all three, um, that's the reason why the purity of heart is emphasized in all true philosophic and religious systems. Okay. Well, I live in Hollywood, so believe me, there's a lot of people that would tell you they are the center of the universe. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> they might be wrong. Okay. So when you say, uh, no, I want to say nomad, but that's not what I mean. Monad, monad. So for, so you're saying, is it one monad? Do I have a monad or we're all in one monad? Which we're would all, be a great t-shirt slogan. Right. We're all in the same right. one. So, okay. It is. It is. So, so a couple more examples would be like source, internal and external influences. And you can even say like soul, heart and extremity. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, I like yeah. source. I'm going to go with source. And I think w- that's a great one for us to use whenever this comes up. So that's great. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay. So what is the difference between astrology and astronomy? Ooh, good question. So, um, <laughs> We deal with the the material, um, let's say, globes, only for the function of the timing of the movements of inner planets and stars that lie hidden at the center of um, man's being. So the difference between an astrologer and astronomer, both use bona fide scientific data, numbers, mathematics, and they're founded in fact, but... An astrologer sees the effects of of a planetary and heavenly movement and how it relates to like an individual, a group, a country, and so on, um, not only toward their past, but also present day and future, in addition to the relationship they have with the deity itself. So it's, I know it's a lot to take in, I'm sure. Yeah, day one. A lot to take in, but I, but I get, but I like that it's, so it's two different ways of dealing with scientific data, correct? It is. And with the same data. It, it, well, it is, um, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about, uh, so an astronomer, they're looking at the, the numbers and where the things lie, but they're not seeing how it affects the, the individual, the soul and how it interacts with the monad. Oh, okay. And that's the big difference. Okay, so astrology uh, is not seeing, we're talking about how it affects us connected to source, and astronomy is just uh, scientific, correct? So it's a, so astrology is one step further than astronomy. It, it is, and if you think back in the past, um, the ancients, let, let's say this, the ancients, when I had brought up Plato, um, so Plato was Everyone the, brings up Plato, Dave. I can't even okay. say it. The other day I was well, at the store and someone said, I'm going to have a Plato of food. 
<laughs> it, folks, it's it, it's good, we're good. taping this at nine a.m. in the morning. I've only had one cup of coffee, so excuse some of the jokes. <laughs> I'm having a plato of, well, of fruit and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> a plato of beans and rice. Mm-hmm. Oh. So you know, Plato was a long time ago, and he's an ancient. But Plato called um, uh, some of the things that he dealt with when he was learning and discussing astrology that the ancients of his time, back way before him, meant astrology in this manner or that manner. So astrology has been a, been around for a long time, not quite, um, it, and it was also known as astronomy. So it split at one point. Okay. Got, all right. Got it. So that's where the split was. Okay. So, um, all right. So I think I'm on, I think I one more question and then, uh, we're going to get into what we can expect from you in the future. That's what I want to get into. Okay. So, um, okay. so astrology can be really broad. And a lot of times I know I have gotten this question. I've gotten the question of, um, you know, that always thing comes up. The universe was moving a second every blah, blah, blah. So everybody's the wrong sign. And how do you explain that? Or some stupid question. And it's kind of turns into what system of astrology are you using? So I know astrology is really broad. Is there a particular field or focus or concentration for you that you'll be bringing to us? Well, there can, I can talk about the basics. That's not a problem. Um, because I think that whenever someone gets into astrology, they really need to know the basics. But um, what I really, what I personally focus on, what, when I first began in astrology, I was seeing the horoscopes in paper, newspapers, um, like you're talking about, and it never quite fit who I was. And I had also to get past that concept of it being voodoo. So that was like repeated time and again as I was a kid. So when I came to see there, there were many similarities in different types of astrology readings, and it really raised my interest. Hey, there's a, is there a way I can, you know, see my unconscious self and, you know, the motivators? And do they really define my path in life? Well, I became interested. So my studies took me through the basics of understanding what and where the signs of the zodiac came from and what they mean and how they react with planets coming into like basic, basic angles and stuff. And I told you it was about math Mm -hmm. and the planet's relationship to the time when like a native was born plus a few other things. So then I began learning how timing as in present, past and future react to a chart, the natal chart or the descriptions of what the heavens look like in relation to the exact time and place someone was born. Still, it was the basics. But eventually, as I got deeply involved um, in advanced studies, I found some really significant means to uh, look at an individual, the group, the country, even companies, and uh, and see that they match with my predictions. So what these were, th- these are known as uh, Arabic parts, which tell the inner workings of a person or a figure, and they deal with like all, a- all, all areas of life. And there's hundreds of parts, but my studies focus on 97 from Arabian and Persian astrology and another 73, I think, from various medieval sources. Um, from a number of these parts, I found something called chronicraters or lords of time periods that I'm also really involved in. So these are time, these time periods, they give a snapshot of life and highlight significant events during that time span. It's all really cool stuff, and that's the type of things that I'm interested. But yeah, and I this can is, talk about it. And this is why uh, when I, there's a guy that does all these tapes on uh, YouTube that he says, this is why astrology doesn't work, and he goes, blah, blah, blah. And you can't answer that in it, it, like exactly what you're talking about. Like if you really get into the, the, the astrology, the charts, this deeply in, like you're talking about, it's a whole different game than, Oh, I'm supposed to avoid, uh, cats and cantaloupe today. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I do. And, uh, uh, okay. I'm sorry. I interrupted you there. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. So you're talking about no, the, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm just saying that, that I, 
As far as explaining astrology, I think that most people need to start at the basics and understand what it's all about. And, and then um, I myself am at an area where my focus, that the thing that interests me the most are these um, Arabic parts and the chronic craters. So um, that's, that's where I am. <laughs> and those are the parts that we're going to uh, slowly go over that are going to help people get a more um, specific and answer in astrology. Right. Um, the no. Let me let me back up one. Okay. Karen. Okay. So I think that for me to talk to people on the podcast and and let them know what uh, you know to help them learn about astrology, let's go to the basics. So the very basics are where everybody needs to begin. So um, like I said earlier, that uh, uh, a natal chart. What a natal chart is, and. So if no one knows what a natal chart is, which is the basis of everything that astrology is about, right? then we can go over the, the basic stuff because you don't start off in math and trigonometry. You start with one plus one. Right. 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 And, and there's, a, um, there's a website called Always Astrology. That if we can direct people to that while, after we're done with the basics, it would be great. But their birth chart is down. I sent them a email to kind of get, cause they have the best explanation where people can kind of go float around and check out their chart and then incorporate what you're talking about. Does that make sense? It does. And when someone needs to find out what their chart is, they need a few pieces of information. Very key. It's really important to know at least have a great uh, uh, an idea how close it is to the time you were born. So if you were born at uh, 12.03 a.m., then you wouldn't put down 12 o'clock. You would put 12.03. So, it's, so you need the time that you were born, the day you were born, and the location. So it wouldn't be like latitude and longitude, although... Um, that comes up. They uh, do that for you in a good uh, birth chart you, calculator. Right. Yeah. Right. So you'll need those three things. And, um, you know, whatever questions they ask, it's not uh, intrusive questions. It's something very simple. But those three things are absolutely key. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick review of what we've learned. Okay. Here's what we've learned. We've learned okay. that, that a, a nomad has nothing to do with astrology. <laughs> <laughs> it's a monad, okay? <laughs> That's where, yes. So first thing. Uh, second, astrologers, much better than astronomers. Okay, just my opinion, but they know more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, for this exercise, uh, I don't think we'll need it right away, but folks, get ready to find the exact time and place that you were born. Okay? Um and uh, you said lords of the time. What was that phrase you used? Oh, lords of time periods, uh, chronic craters, right? We need to get some fun names for them, okay? Because I already like that. We need to get little crowns, <laughs> make names for that. Um, and also, but I just want to say, but first of all, thank you for that, Dave. I'm joking around now because I've had my second cup of coffee and a hot flash. So I'm doing, <laughs> I'm on top of it now. <laughs> Um, but, um, I have to tell you where we're going with Dave and why you want to stick with this because, um, Dave, actually you work hours on this. It's why, uh, uh, you work when you do something or a chart, it's not like a tarot card where I can sit down and meditate for five minutes and flip it. You work hours on this and I'm just going to tell you where I'm going to give you a little clue folks where we're going. Dave is working on the astrology where he, he thinks, I'm not going to say he thinks, no, I don't want to say that as in he, he may not get it right, but you can kind of, you're working on an astrology where they predict a person's death. And of course, you have to know, I have been driving him crazy since he told me that wasn't astrology. I can't wait. And um, <laughs> and you have it narrowed down to October. And I sit here and think, please, God, make it October 31st. <laughs> not, not this year, not this year. But would that not be the, like, people would be like that. Halloween, she could not have asked for a better time to die. <laughs> There, there's so many dealings with parts. These are uh, these Arabic parts. Like uh, one would be death, of course. Um, but there's others like the part of profession, and it's uh, like uh, it's the the 
people who are suddenly elevated, um, the co- commodity speculation, like the part of barley and the part of cucumbers, et cetera. And then the part of the military talks about war and how it affects, uh, um, you know, countries. Back a long time ago, um, kings and uh, would not go to war unless they checked with their astrologer first. I do that with my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only beat them up on certain days when it's appropriate ast- astrologically. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do this in the morning, Dave. <laughs> no, I think it's great. I think this is wonderful. Um, all right. So listen, Dave, that, um, that is, uh, that is great. I think that's a great place to start. Ah, uh, uh, you got okay. anything more for us to take away till we get you back on? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. I'm so excited. And, um, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to leave it up to you, Dave. We're, we'll talk off, uh, off, uh, phone, off tape. And this will be great. I can't wait to get the next one going. So folks, remember what you learned. We're going to get, get your birth chart stuff. I'm going to try and find a right sign where they can have their birth chart ready while you talk. And, uh, this is terrific. So folks, you see, it's not just something in the newspaper. You need a freaking genius like Dave. You need to know him. So. <laughs> I think we're all just lucky. So get your notebooks open. (laughs) Thank you, Karen. All right. Thanks, Dave. Hey, everybody. I'm talking tarot with my friend, Melissa Sanova, like Casanova. (laughs) <laughs> I just learned that littlefoxtarot.com. Um, let me tell you, I have this lady's book right in front of me, Kitchen Table Tarot. It is my new morning book, Melissa. Oh, right on. Which means every day, cool. I, yes, I pull my morning cards and uh, I go right to your book, which I love. And we're going to get to that in a second. Um, but she has a tarot blog. She has tarot classes. And uh, you interviewed me for your blog. That's how we became friends. And I was like, you totally have to be on the podcast. Nice to talk to you again, Melissa. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. I actually just came back from... Um I I presented at the Omega Institute in Rhinebeck, um, New York, and that was really cool because I got to present with um, Rachel Pollack and Liz Dean and the kind of like luminaries of the tarot world and Mary Kay Greer, you know, and that was really cool. Yeah, and the weekend was called Masters of the Tarot, and I'm like all weekend thinking Masters of the Universe and (laughs) He-Man flashbacks. But it was really good. It was a good time. Oh, that's fantastic. And you were, uh, did you, uh, what were you, got, was it just like a whole weekend of tarot? Yeah, it was actually a whole week. The weekend was for myself and uh, three, two other teachers, specifically George Corey, who is a, um, who's really great. He's a um, uh, channeler oh. and a spiritualist. And then Liz Dean, who did, she's just done the Game of Thrones tarot. And she's written probably a billion books on tarot. So the three of us were there for the weekend, and Mary Greer and Rachel Pollack actually host a whole week of tarot studies. Oh um, my God. And this was the 31st year of doing it. So I was really, like, I was honored to be invited. Um, but, yeah, it was really cool. Oh, that's great. Now, and um, so where was this? And if people are excited about it, how next year, where should they watch for it? Oh, um, if you go to the Omega Institute, you'll find uh, the weekend. You just have to look up tarot in the Omega Institute. It's kind of um, a new age, kind of woo, spiritually based um, camp. And uh, it's, it's very cool. Like, and I ate more tofu than I ever have in my entire (laughs) life, but, um, but they basically hold things like, um, I think Deepak Chopra has taught there and Michael Weiss, the guy who did uh, many lives, many masters. Um, he was there. And so any, anybody who has anything to do with spirituality or, um, sixth sense or anything like that, um, teaches there and they have lots of yoga and things like that. Oh, that's great. So. That's awesome. Well, we'll have to talk about the, uh, the Omega Institute soon, but now let's get to you, my friend. Um, tell me how you, uh, started out in tarot. Are you part of, um, I think we've talked about this on your uh, blog too, where we were talking about, uh, it was tarot and psychic stuff, a part of your family, or did you have to sort of learn it yourself? Um, it always has been kind of in the background of my family. Like, um, uh, my family is filled with soldiers and police officers and nurses and firemen. 
And to a person, they all have a story about how they just knew they needed to move and then a bullet went past them, or they just knew not to open that door. Um, and I remember stuff when I was a kid where like my uncle Richard died in Florida and my family lives all over the world and everyone woke up at three in the morning and started calling each other saying, who died? Do you know yet? No. And every, it was like, you know, tag, everyone's calling back and forth. And then we finally figured out who it was. Um, but I woke up screaming and I, I was like 12, I think when he passed away and I woke up screaming and my dad said, it's okay. I don't know who it is yet. I'll let you know. Like, you know, it was any other thing. It was totally normal. That's Um, amazing. Yeah. But our family is super tight. And um, our ancestry on my father's side, one side is Native American and can be traced back to uh, Handsome Lake, who was a prophet in the Seneca tribe. And then on the other side uh, was Christina Sinova, who was the last woman killed in the Polish witch hunt. So, you know, kind of got it double barreled. Um, (laughs) I love that. So, yeah, but I, I think I'm the first one who's ever used tarot before, um, although I think my, my grandmother and her sister used to read playing cards, and I got my deck when I was 14. Um, my friend and I were talking about, you know, how you're in, like, Catholic grade school and you talk about Ouija boards and automatic writing and all that stuff? Yeah, I wasn't in Catholic That's school, what, but I loved all that stuff. My mother would have freaked out yeah. if I brought home a tarot deck at 14. Right. And that's what I expected too. But I, he gave me the deck and I was really excited. And my dad, um, let me read for him constantly. He was like my guinea pig. I read for him almost every day and I would read for my friends and it just kind of grew from there. But he just, my friend Steve just gave me this deck and said, you need to know how to do this. Um, and I'd never, you know, I just kind of started figuring out how to do it and it's kind of become my life now. So, uh, and, and Steve is Steve, uh, uh, give us an introduction who Steve is. Was he just your friend at that time or is he a lifelong friend or part of the family? You know, I wish he, I wish I knew where he was because we went to high school together and then I completely lost track of him because I moved away from my hometown, but I wish I knew where he was because he absolutely changed my life. Um, and I want to, you know, at least buy him a drink or something. So <laughs> at least, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. So where was home? Where did you grow up? I grew up, I was born in Kansas. Um, and I grew up in a small town outside of Jefferson city, Missouri, um, which is the state capital. It's pretty fancy. Um, it's actually a beautiful little town and, uh, Coming from there, it's kind of shocking that I found tarot at all, you know. I was just going to say that. Yeah, that sounds a little out there for that city. Yeah. And, I mean, we're not like the buckle of the Bible Belt, but it's pretty Bible-y. I'd say we're like one of the, you know, belt loops of the Bible Belt. And uh, (laughs) it's, I don't know, it's it's not a place like, my dad is proudly telling people my daughter wrote a book. and And I have two more that I'm working on. And he's very proudly telling people this, and he's not getting any trouble about it. So it's kind of um, be nice to her because she's my kid kind of thing, So, which I appreciate. It's nice to have supportive parents when you're a fucking uh, weirdo. Excuse yeah. me, can I swear? <laughs> of course. Okay, good. Please, it's encouraged. <laughs> it's yeah. encouraged. Um, yeah. You know, that's funny. I I, well, I would think... Well, now, I would think now there aren't, I have a friend I just interviewed who owned it, opened a crystal store in Kentucky, and she's not having any resistance at all. So I think people yeah. are getting more in okay with it. I think, I shouldn't say that because with I the think, way. You know, I think that you're right. I, um, I remember I got fired uh, because of this stuff when I, uh, like in the 90s, uh, early 2000s, I got fired. She found out I did tarot readings. And then within a week, I was promoted to a job that was two levels above mine. I wasn't trained, and then I was fired for not learning it fast enough. But I'm like, oh, okay. What job was this? It was a stupid job at an insurance company that I wasn't good for anyway, because I'm kind of mouthy, and I don't need to be doing data entry all day. Right. <laughs> but it was very easy for her to do that. And so, and now my, my employer now, because I do have a muggle job, um, loves it. I sent her a copy of my book and she's coming to a book signing I'm having in March and she thinks it's the coolest thing. So, and that's only what, 15 years difference. So I think that there is, you know, it is easier to talk about because I think people are looking for answers and whenever you look for answers, you, you come across this stuff, you know? Yeah. And regardless also- of 
Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, it's funny because I live in LA and I love LA and people hate LA or they love to hate LA. When I'm on the road, they'll say, I hate LA and I'll go, have you ever been there? And they'll say no. And I, (laughs) I really think, uh, you know, television does some good and people love the Long Island medium. They love the ghost shows. And I think it's sort of taken the scary out of it. I think you're right. I think um, I got to interview the Long Island um, psychic. I got to, what's her name? Um, Teresa Caputo. Yeah. Yeah. I got to interview her. She was like, she was the nicest person. Um, and uh, she was completely laid back. And I, the thing I told her before we hung up is thank you for not making us look like a bunch of crazy assholes because she's, she does it. She, she does her stuff very pragmatically. And I don't know, you know, how she does it because I actually saw her show, her live show. I, I, I don't know how the hell she did it. Um, but however she does it, she's making people feel better and she's being ve- very genuine about it. And I think as long as you come from a place of, of genuineness and honesty, you really can't go wrong. You, you know, know she, and I think, yeah, she's one of these people yeah. that I also um she like there's a guy on Amazon that just has books written dedicated to be nasty to her or to call her a fake. And I was like, that's oh. kind of a, yeah, that's a crappy life. And of all the people I've never heard anything but great and positive comments about her and how good she is. Yeah. And I, you know, as I said, I don't know my impression. It felt to me like she was being psychic and like pulling details out of the person's mind. But I'm not a channeler, so I don't know. But whatever she did and however she did it, she made people feel so much better that there's nothing wrong with that, you know? And she's not, she doesn't charge an outrageous amount. She, anything that she makes on her tour, she donates to charity because she's like, I have enough money. Uh, um, so, I mean, she's living a good life and being a good person. So I don't really see any reason to talk shit about her, you know? And yeah. I don't understand people who that's their whole focus. I'm like, that's a sad little life you've got there, pal. You know, yeah, yeah, it's got to so. be so negative. And you know, I have a friend that trained under uh, Lisa Williams, and they say okay. there's two different uh, ways to do mediumship, which I'm not really a medium. And, and I think that I do it the second way, which the first mediumship way is where you're uh, having a direct conversation with that person. And the other one they kind of call a psychic channel, where you're picking mm-hmm. you know, exactly what you said, psychically around the person, which I think I can do that sometimes. And I don't know that one is better than the other, but I'm with you. Yeah. If she's not uh, taking thousands of dollars, if she's, you know, and she is probably uh, like me. Like, if I can't read you, I will hand you back your money. If you send me an yeah, email, she, I'll hand you back your money if I didn't do my job right. Yeah, and I think her readings haven't changed in price for years. She still, she has like a three-month backlog, but she hasn't raised her rates or anything. Oh, and I... Great. You know, I, I got no problem with that, you know? So. That, that is where you, um, that is where the rubber kind of meets the road with who we are in this business because everyone wants to believe. I have a friend that thinks a lot of people are out there just stealing money from people and they're fakes. And I think there's not as many fakes as there are people that wish they were psychic that are not because to build yeah. a business doing tarot is very, very hard. You would have to be a mastermind con man to do it and to put the yeah. energy into it would be. Yeah. I, and it's word of mouth. My entire business is, is what I have been reading, I guess, professionally for 15 years now. And my entire business has been word of mouth. Yeah. So if I fuck somebody over, they're going to tell everyone. Yeah. And all of my clients disappear. It, it, to move unethically in this business is really, really difficult. I mean, I do know people, but they're more like, um, you know, the neon sign hand folks. Like I went to Chicago. I love Chicago so much. Me too. And um, I I had a terrible hangover. I was with my ex husband who was wearing Cardinals gear because we live in St. Louis, and he was kind of a, you know. <laughs> First anyway. of all, wait. So, I love I love how this story is starting. It's in Chicago with a hangover. <laughs> yeah, I drank great. all of the Stella Artois in Chicago. That was gone. <laughs> so um, I had to order more. So we go up to this thing, and I gave her twenty bucks, and we sat in this room. And just kind of hung out. And then she, she beckoned me back into her office. And it was all like, you know, drapes with velvet and all of that. And then she like take a, takes a deep breath and starts going, 
I see you like you're followed by a dark cloud and she's laying down tarot cards that legit have nothing to do with anything she's saying. <laughs> and she said, I'm shy and it's hard for me to talk to people and I have no intuition. And I was like, okay. So I looked down and behind her desk is a TV screen. So clearly she, oh, she said, um, I was, I was clearly sick cause I was holding my head, uh, cause of the hangover. And she said, I've been sick for a long time and that my, the, the, we traveled a far distance and here's my husband wearing Cardinal's gear, right? Clearly <laughs> not from Chicago. And she's like, if you pay me $600 to be your psychic advisor, I can remove this curse that's on you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to stop you right there. First of all, you suck at this. <laughs> Secondly, people come to you because they're sad or scared or lonely or upset or frightened. And you're going to take advantage of that. Yeah. You know, shame on you. So I let her keep the 20 bucks, but um, I did put her address like on my website and I was like, no, she's, she's going to be gone anyway. I don't need to contribute to that. But I mean, it was really shady. And if I were scared, if I were looking desperately for answers, I would have given her any amount of money to help me make my life okay. Yeah. And that scared me, you know? So I always tell everybody, you don't have to get a reading from me. That's fine. I know probably a hundred different tarot readers I can refer you to. Because like, I swear a lot. I'm really direct. Um, I give people homework and I call them dumbasses when they're acting like it. So not every, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, <laughs> but I would rather refer somebody away from me than have them stumble upon someone who's going to take advantage. Yeah. And so like, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, so just a word of warning for people. Never go see a psychic that ha- you haven't gotten a personal referral for ever. Never pay more than, I wouldn't pay more than $250 for a reading ever. And no one can take curses off of you except for you. Yeah. And, Period. Yeah. And I, uh, it's, it's very, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck at a hundred for an hour. And I know some people that went to see someone that was way more and, uh, they came back to me, but you know, what is another, um, thing that wasn't there before is Yelp. I have a, a great Yelp page, but you know, um, if people were really mad, I would not have that page. I know if you get one bad review, it goes to the top and thank God I haven't yeah. yet, but it's, but I really, I think these gypsies, uh, either have to keep moving or, you know, and I mean that in a bad way. Not sometimes there's a good gypsy, but I think they either have to keep moving or you're right. You know, sometimes people come to me and I swear to God, sometimes it's just to make them not feel crazy about what they're experiencing yeah. psychically. But yeah, somebody could absolutely take advantage of that. Yeah. And that's like most of my job is, is not, I don't, I, I can, you know, do predictive tarot, but most of my job is validation. Most of my job is saying you were right to leave that job or you need to follow your gut instinct because your relationship, like I did a reading earlier today and I said, so let's talk about your husband. And she started laughing. I'm like, what I can see, you could either take him or leave him. And she goes, holy shit. <laughs> how did you know that? And it's it's not how I know that matters. What matters is, is that she was broadcasting that so strongly. She needs to make a decision. Right. She needs to do something because being in the in-betweens is a very uncomfortable place for everyone. Nobody likes not knowing and staying between, you know, I'm not saying you got to leave your husband because I said so I'm saying you need to make a decision. Right. Um, and being in the, in- it, it's just uncomfortable. And I try to get my clients to be empowered, like um, go talk to a therapist and talk it out and see what the program. And if you're not ready now, you know, don't, you're not in danger. So don't worry about it. So like we talk through all kinds of, um, opportunities that that she can have to take control of her life yeah more than i would say you're going to meet a tall dark handsome stranger and blah blah blah. although i did get a reading before i married my husband in new orleans and this guy is amazing he's in marie Marie laveau's shop and his name is philip and uh he said uh i don't know why you're wasting your time dating men online because you're going to meet him in person he's going to be tall and broad-shouldered and have a big old beard (laughs) And my husband, I met him two months later, is tall and broad-shouldered and has a big old beard. So, wow, yeah, that actually was accurate that one time. <laughs> I think there are, I, well, I think there are, um, there's very few and very rare uh, people that just can, uh, pull stuff out of the air. And, yeah. um, and a lot of times I feel like they don't work in the field and sometimes they do, but I know stories of people that have sat next to someone on an airplane that has, uh, prompted this stuff. And it's almost like they're probably so psychic that they couldn't yeah. do it, that it would be too much. Yeah, and I, 
I've I've done it before, but I know how to turn it not off, but down. Like after I had my kids, it went like full tilt, and I was picking thoughts out of people's head, which is not okay generally. And I also try really hard not to read people without permission because that's shady. Right. But sometimes, like my husband, I'll start humming a song, and he'll like stop it. I was just thinking about that song, quit it, you know. Um, and I can't really help it, but it's it's never anything like incredibly useful. <laughs> it's, it's always oh, you were listening to ABBA. All right, that's great. But um, it's always just random stuff. But I did one time I had a friend come over and she gave me a hug and I was like, I'm so sorry your grandmother died. And she said, I, she didn't. Oh. And I went, oh shit, I'm sorry. And then her mother called and her grandmother just died. Yeah, and, that's hard. Yeah, because I don't know where the information comes from. So I trust it to be a real thing. And then when it turns out to be a real thing, I'm like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. You know, but I try to try to not do that to people because it freaks them out. Yeah. So. And you're, you know, when you're tuned in like that, the other thing I always think is, um, you're tuned into it. So I always think people think psych when, when I meet people that are very intuitive or starting out, I think they think it's going to hit them like a truck. Like everything is going to get blurry except for the vision you're supposed to see. And it's like, no, being psychic, I think, uh, sometimes it feels what's right feels the same as what's wrong. You're still you. You've just tapped yeah. into the information. And, um, yeah, I, 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 and, and it's not all useful information. Like, so, yeah. sometimes I was like, I go, uh, I remember for a friend, I was reading for her and I go, uh, do you know anyone that, or you, are you next to anyone that's wearing uh black and white stripes that is almost dressed like Beetlejuice? And she was like, uh, no. <laughs> No. And then I met her that night for a show. And sure enough, our friend walks in and that friend has on these giant black and white stripes. And I thought, oh, it, oh, yeah, it's not useful information, but it's all the same. It's yeah. information. That's how I found out I could do phone readings because um, I thought they were bullshit for a long time. And I'm like, I'm not Miss Cleo. I'm not doing phone readings. And although I love Miss Cleo, she's amazing. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. But my friend called me and she's like, I need a reading right now. And I'm like, you're in Texas, first of all, so that's not going to work. So I started the reading and then she's like, I have to go email me the rest. And I'm like, oh my God. So I emailed her and at the end of it, I said, are you wearing a gray sweatshirt and playing with your feet? And my phone rang as soon as I hit send and she's like, how the hell did you know that? Right. Yeah. And, and, but how useful is that? It's, it's useful in validation. Sure. But aside from an anecdotal evidence, it's like, Okay, I'm so glad I got to see you in your gray hoodie playing with your feet. That was totally useful and will change the world, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and so now, and you teach tarot classes online. I'm, I keep telling everyone I'm trying to get myself together to do it. I'm trying to get my, you know, my videos, whatever I'm doing. But without, um, like, you know, I want everyone to go buy your classes. But can you tell a little bit, give a little advice of how you teach? Or, like, you and I had this conversation. Like, I'm a very technical teacher. I very much teach um, the study of the symbolism and the signs and, and how to put them together. But I love your book because every morning, like I, I think I will never stop reading tarot books. I will read all of them. Yeah. Yours is so um, palatable. I feel like I'm talking to a friend. Okay. Yay. It's not uh, technical. It's not, it's very, um, and you also like uh, with the pages, I was, I, I think page of pentacles was my card today and I'm reading this and I'm thinking how um, I feel like I totally get the vibe. If this, if the page of pentacles was sitting next to me, who I'd be talking to. Yeah. And I try to make them super approachable, like, because they're, it's hard. And a lot of them all, especially the minor arcana look alike. And um, like the moon card, everybody expects to love the moon, and it's scary. So it, there's a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of basic stuff that we can knock out of the way without getting into the history or any of the, the symbolism or anything like that, just so that when you get the card and you say, oh, it's the emperor, and then you remember the emperor is Eric Cartman dressed in a police uniform going, respect my authority. <laughs> that is the emperor. If you know that, you can use that card. And then you can go back later and see why is he sitting on a stone throne and why is his robe decorated like this? Right. And that stuff can come later, but I want you to actively use your cards as soon as you can because the best way to learn them is by reading. 
you know? Yeah. I read for everybody that would let me. I read constantly. I used to read for, like, beer and pop money in college, and, and anybody who would let me, I would read for them. And um, that's how I learned. I just put the time in. Yeah. But I think the sooner you can pick up your cards and, and make them a, a viable part of your life, the better. Yeah. And, you know, uh, people should do one card a day. In fact, they should get, this is a great way to start with your book. Pull one or yeah. two cards a day with this book. It's Kitchen Table Tarot. And I'm going to say that a couple of times because I really, uh, you know, if I didn't like this book that much, I would direct this interview another way. But this is really clear. There's a, there's another book that I love called Numerology and the Divine Triangle. And this book and that book, if you are just starting out with tarot, um, I, I would get Melissa's first. And it is just so uh, palatable. And and you know what? I don't even know what that word means, but I know it's good. It's easy to swallow. <laughs> there you go. Um, but there even, you go. and you know what? I love the cover. I just have to say I love the cover. Thank you. My next book actually has the same check on it. Oh. It's, except she's wearing, yeah, it's it, awesome. Yeah, it's it's the hot kind of 50-ish. Uh, it's just adorable. In fact, I remember seeing it on Amazon before I even met you and uh, loving that cover. Uh, in fact, do you have a deck that goes with this? There is a deck. I did not create it. They look a lot alike, um, and I don't think that was on purpose. But it's called the Housewives Tarot, and I freaking love it. Um, but it is that 50s like vibe kind of thing, that, and so they both match a little bit. But that's a great deck too. It really is. So, yeah. Yep. Housewives yeah. Tarot. I don't know who made it, but they're awesome. Yeah. Get it on Amazon. Yeah. So you get your deck, folks. And I kind of feel like, especially the way you also presented this book, like you can get any deck. Like I'm a weight writer girl, but I think you can pick up a, yeah. a lot of decks with your book and just absorb it. So, uh, reading yeah. is a good tip for people. I always say meditation. I think, well, and I, I, this is a pot, I I don't, I don't meditate. I'm learning to, I just read this wonderful book by Dr. Jim Doty called uh, Into the Magic Shop that I'm going to start recommending to all of my students because it's, it, I'm starting to meditate, medicate, starting to meditate <laughs> because of this book. Because anything that gets you in a cool, quiet place in your, in your center will help you do a good reading because you can't do a reading if you're squirrely or if you're distracted or if you're drunk or if you're stoned or whatever. You can't do a good reading because the tool that you're using is your body and your tarot cards. And if your body is off balance, then your reading is going to be off balance as well. So I think because I've been doing readings for 30 years without meditating, I just kind of muscled through it. I'm really good at doing tarot readings now, and I can do one at the drop of a hat with no preparation at all. Mm -hmm. But it was really hard to get there. So I think people would make it easier on themselves if they did not do like I did and if they actually learned how to meditate, maybe light a candle for focus and uh, light some incense so you can lift your vibration up a little bit. All of these things are good things, unnecessary, but good things because they make it easier. Right. And if you, if you can meditate for 10 minutes before you do a reading, awesome. If you do a reading in the back of a car, say on the way to a Nirvana concert in the 90s, <laughs> that's cool too it will also work it will not work as easily yes so and I, I always make your job easier you know yes and i always and i'm uh telling people by the time this comes out i should have my meditation page up on my website which will be completely free Sweet. yeah there'll be a five Sweet. minute for people who only have five minutes there'll be a 20 minute and there i'm going to be putting them up slowly but one at a time but also you know i um a lot of times people will ask me because i go right on stage and do comedy with them and what they don't realize is uh i had been in comedy probably 15, 20 years by that time. So my comfort level on the stage is mm -hmm. the same as my living room. Um, so yeah. that, that was easy to bring that up there. And then also, even when I was learning, you know, when I'm up there and we're doing faster readings, I'm giving honest readings, but they're not as in-depth as if you called me. But yeah. I, I learned um, uh, to be funny throughout 
Like I can, if it, yeah. I can, you know, uh, the, the mix of what I used to do with the crowd now turning into the cards is uh, a show that I'm going to plug right here. October, the last weekend of Halloween, <laughs> I have a standing at Flappers and Burbank. Come see me and Lamont do our tarot show. Uh, hour of stand up, 30 minutes of tarot. So now, um, let's take the, I am not superstitious about my decks. I know people, sometimes people will say, doesn't someone have to give you a deck or something like I was taught that these are pieces of cardboard and that's one way yeah. of thinking of it. Um, how about you yeah. with the stu- superstitions around tarot? So, and you know, everyone has their own way and I don't mean, to, I don't want to disparage anybody's way. I have friends who keep their, al- their tarot wrapped in silk on their altar. Cool. Um, but I think that the mystery shrouding tarot has been kept there so people can con other people using tarot. If it's kept as this big hidden secret mystery and you have to be given a, a, a deck, you're not going to start reading for however long it takes for somebody to think that you want a deck. You right. know, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So my friend, one of my friends, who's actually an artist uh, and has created tarot decks, didn't buy a deck for 10 years because of that stupid-ass rumor. <laughs> 10 years. So oh. if you need a deck, get a deck. You know, there's also a rumor, like a superstition, that you should have to steal your first deck. That's such bullshit. And, you know, people in new, new age stores are working their butts off to get their business going. Don't steal from them. I you never know? heard that before. So, yeah, that's another one. So if you're not going to buy it, you have to steal it. And I'm like, ugh, shady. So I think the most important thing is to get a deck that you can understand and that appeals to you. Um, so, cause there's like a Hobbit tarot and there are gummy bear ones and all of this, but I think starting either with a Marseille deck, if you prefer non-illustrated fifth cards or with the Rider Waite Smith deck is the best way because they're very basic. And they're and, very, uh, uh, there's so much information on them, but you know, I cannot find, yeah. um, um, uh, the, the, when you said the first name, the Maris, uh, how did you say it? That's the one that's all, Marseille. yeah, that's all red and blue and white. Correct. I don't, I don't care for them because the pip cards are, it looks like a bunch of sticks to me. And I'm like, eh, I don't, I like pulling the details out of the cards, you know, like, um, right. in the, in the six of cups, the flowers that are in the cups and the kids are small and they're looking at each other and they're, they're happy. And the, the weather looks like you can look at the color of the sky or the water in a tarot card and figure out what it means. There are right. only three or four minor arcana with dark water and all of those are scary cards, you know? Yeah. Or you can look at, weather is doing like in the three of swords which is heartbreak there's a storm and the rain is just pelting down that's a bad card you're gonna have a bad day you know and i can get so much and first so much meaning from those whereas if it's a marseille deck it's three sticks i'm like well all right (laughs) yeah yeah i got three sticks in my other room i don't know what that means yeah yeah exactly exactly (laughs) Yeah. And you know, the, um, the other thing that I find is because even like this week, I think I was doing like four readings a day or something like that. And I, sometimes I will zone out and just be staring at a card. And I like never had this answer before, but I'm looking at the, um, the, uh, six of pentacles. The, uh, the guy is, uh, giving money to the poor. He's dropping coins to the poor. And someone is asking me about being sick. And in that second, for the first time ever, those coins did not look like coins. They looked like pills. And I said, someone yeah. is going to give you pills. And sometimes it's that blatant. I'll never forget. I pulled the Hierophant and somebody was saying, I, my sister passed away. We can't find the keys to her car. And I was like, oh, you're going to find them because there's the keys right in front. And I was like, it, right, oh, exactly. if it could only always be that clear. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, yeah, it speaks a lot to your talent, though, that you can look into the picture like that, because it's it's difficult to do that. Once you've learned the cards, it's really difficult to pro- pull the symbols out as individual things. But yeah, yeah, that's really that speaks to your to your talent. So well done, you. Well, thanks. You know what else? Have you ever seen the after tarot deck? Yes, that one is really cool. So is the vice versa. Oh. Um, both of them, they're both from Llewellyn, and the vice versa shows the back of the card. So it shows the magician from the back, and there's an audience standing in front of him. Like oh. it's really cool. Oh, right, I know. Right. And then the yeah, and then the after tarot shows what happens the minute after that picture is taken or the scene is held. Right. Yeah. 
yeah. Yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah that's I like a, it a lot. That's a brilliant. That's a couple of brilliant ideas there. And also, just for anybody that feels uh, the cards are woo woo or scary, I find, and I have had people. I don't really use a pendulum just because I lost my pendulum. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, but I have a friend that. Um, he used it in a haunted place or something and something became attached to it. And I, I kind of hear up and down about pendulum that yes, it's good. Or you got to know how to do it or something to get attached. I have never felt like that about a tarot deck. I have never felt negativity. In fact, I feel the opposite of all the things you're going to try. I feel like the tarot deck, it works on the conscious, the subconscious mind. And I also feel like it's a barrier. So people that are worried something's going to be attached to the deck or you're going to open a vortex. Yeah. That goes out the door. Yeah. I think I I'm Okay been doing this for 30 years. I have no demons hanging on me that I know of, right? <laughs> um, it, there are pieces of paper, and there are different ways to read tarot. Um, there's like, I think there are, Mary Kager actually has extensive writing about this on her website. Um, there's intuitive reading where you just, your body knows intuitively something that you couldn't know any other way. Or there's psychic readings where you just know something. Like when my friend's grandmother died, I was like, oh, your grandma died. How the hell do I know that? It wasn't for my body. It was just psychically, I just knew. You can read them by looking at the symbols, like um, uh, what, like Young's, um, oh, collective unconscious kind of thing, with all the archetypal residents, right. resonance. And you can also just pick symbols out um, and use them like that. So, like, um, with, the, with the guy, you were, like, you're looking at the coins, and they shifted into something else for that reading. And the other way is a little bit of all of that, which is how I read. Um, right. and too. there's nothing magical about it. There's nothing. I I think it's a gift and I think everyone has it. And I think mine is really developed, Right. you know, and yeah. I think that's, that's what makes me different than my clients in this regard is that I've been playing with these cards for so long. I'm really good at it and I'm comfortable with them enough to trust what I'm saying is true. Um, so, and that's it. There's not, I didn't have to go to any special class. I didn't have to get certified. There's nothing. I just had to practice a lot, you know? Right. And, and I always think, um, and that is an interesting thing because you can take a class just to help you. Maybe you're more of a visual learner than a, than a book learner. And then an online class is perfect for you. But yeah, I always think, yeah, I, I do that same thing. Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm not even seeing the cards and I'm getting the information soon enough. Or sometimes I feel myself go on a tear where I just start talking, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. that sometimes is the most useful information that can come out. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, I've given readings before where I've laid the cards down and literally have not looked at them and I just talk to the person and it's dead on. Yeah. And that's when I'm doing a psychic or an intuitive reading. And then I've done readings like, where I'll look at each card and go, okay, well, this one means this, and this one means this. But generally, it's kind of an overall vibe, and I use the cards because they're tools. I pick them up when I need to. Uh If I don't need to, I just use my other tools, you know? Right. And do you use reversals? I do not. I I do. I learned, because I learned with this really old Eden Grey book, and it made it seem as if you had to. Um, And I also had to shuffle into my left hand because magic, I don't know, it was dumb. Um, but that's another one of the superstitions. You have to shuffle the cards into your left hand because the blood goes from your heart to your left. It's stupid. I can't believe I believe that for so long. Anyway, um, but I read reversals because I learned to read reversals. Right. And that's it. So if I have students and they don't want to. I'm like, don't. It's fine. Your reading is no less valid if you read reversals or not. It's just the way that you do readings. And the best way for you to do readings is a way that is authentic to you. So if you don't read reversals, that's how you're supposed to be reading. That's perfect. Yeah. You're doing it right. You know? I throw out the um, Celtic cross, and about 15 years in, I watched a video, and I was like, well, look at that. I've been doing it wrong all this time, but it's the way I do it. <laughs> and Yeah, it works. Yeah, I don't use a lot of other layouts because I kind of feel like I go along with the Celtic cross of how it's laid out, how it's supposed to go past, now, coming up, future. And then I, uh, pick, I say I cherry pick what I, if there's more questions, I pull it out a different way or I put those two cards together and, and it's sort of a mishmash, but it's my mishmash. Exactly. Yeah. I started reading with a Celtic cross and then I turned it sideways and started reading from the left to the right. And then I 
I now do, um, I have three on top, two in the middle, and one at the bottom. That's the spread I always use. And then the three on top are kind of what's happening in the past that's still affecting right now. And the two in the middle is what you're dealing with now. And then the one at the bottom, I call the pivot card. Well, what are we going to do about it? You know? Oh. And um, it's pretty predictive, but it also can be, you know, get your head out of your ass and find a new job because you're about to be fired. You know, it can be that pragmatic. <laughs> Or it can be, you know, this is a bad move for you. This is why. Um, and then if there are more questions, I lay down three cards and I just kind of stuff out what's going on with those three cards. You, and it works really well. Oh, that's you know? great. Did you hear my little gasp when you so, you said the, put you, the Celtic cross sideways? I went, oh, and I was yeah, <laughs> with doctor. excitement. Oh, my God, what's going to go on there? <laughs> I, I can't wait to meet you in person someday and and uh and do this. Okay, so last superstition, uh yeah. you have to bury the cards to throw them out. What is it now to get rid of your deck? No. Okay, so no. They're just pieces of paper. I have um I gave a deck to a friend who cut them up and made cards out of them, like greeting cards. Oh, I love and that. I have cuz I had this really great deck. It's called The Heart of Stars Tarot and it has like um Hollywood stars in it and movie scenes. So like the devil was Princess Leia and Jabba the Hutt. And Carrie uh, Carrie Fisher actually signed that card for me. Oh, my God. So I took it. I know, right? Oh my God. What is that worth? So, um, I didn't even know. It's worth a million to me. Like, I could, I could never get rid of it. Um, but I, the deck is useless now because it has no devil card. So I gave it to my friend, and she cut it up and made art with it. Or I have other friends who use it for, like, decoupage or... They use them in classes and throw down a bunch of different cards and show what they mean to each other. Like this deck shows this and this deck shows this. So they're just pieces of paper. Now they're special to me. I have like, I probably 250 decks. Wow. I, I have a problem, Karen. Um, <laughs> and, and I love them, but I probably only use 20 of them. And of those, I use five really heavily. And that's, you know, that's just the way it is. And um, I would be devastated if something happened to them. But it's like my grandfather's hammer. He had a hammer that he used for 45 years. The handle broke. He fixed the hammer, uh, the handle, and kept using it because it was a tool that he liked. Right. So if something were to happen to my hammer, I would be really mad because that's my favorite hammer. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I bury them. Uh, that doesn't sound very biodegradable because there's lots of different inks on them. I don't know if that's good for the environment. Yeah, that's probably or who, or whoever's backyard you're putting them in. Then it's then it's creepy to whoever uh, digs them up. Right. Now I I will say that if I do a lot of readings in a row or if I do a reading that's really heavy, like I had one that this person's uh, kid had committed suicide. It was very heavy, um, and the the reading was very intense. I will not use that deck for a while. I will uh, put it aside. I will put it in the sunlight or I will put it back in order and put some incense by it and put a rock on it and just leave it. Because I do think that it's kind of like walking into a room when people have been fighting and that air is really thick right. and heavy. That can happen to your cards too. They get funky energetically. Um, but I think that that happens to anything, you right. know, if I, if I wear the same shirt to five readings in a row without washing it, which is gross. And why would I do that? <laughs> but, you know, for example, if I did, it would, it would get all, all of that dunk on it. It would be gross and heavy and carry around some of those impressions. So I just, yeah, if yeah. you take good care of yourself, they yeah. could carry you. I had some, uh, I had a, uh, well, basically I have about, cause I really like the rider weight and I don't, I don't move further away from that. I have other ones that I hold on to, but I put, mm -hmm. when I go, when I've actually worn them out where they do not, where you can't use them, you can't shuffle them anymore. I put them all yeah. in a basket. And when I do my tarot show, sometimes if I'm going to do what I call tarot speed reading, everybody takes one out of the basket and sits down and then I go through oh, the crowd and read smart. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And, and then sometimes I have taken um, one out, like my friend was a healer, so I took out the temperance card, and I was like, this is, you know what I mean? Or I've made little yeah. plaques for my friends. But um, it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and sometimes you, I have, I've lost one, and then I found it in the, I was like, oh, I got to get it out of this other deck I'm not using. So I, yeah. I have no superstition about it. Um, and I, I just, I, you've been so good with your time. I have a couple more questions for you. And this, no, fine. Um, 
I just recently did a meditation and I heard, uh, cause I'm, I kind of communicate. I feel like it's my guides. I get, you know, whatever I'm getting. And there was a very specific thing that they said, you need to cleanse yourself twice a day. And so far that has yeah. been a really a good tip. But when I sit here, sometimes I sit down at one and I don't stand up until, or I get, you know, 15 minutes between readings and I'm done at six. I feel like my eyes are crossed and well, no. <laughs> yeah. And it, I know. And it's like, I, um, for other people that sort of run into this, do you have any, uh, grounding tips for them or, uh, anything for people that sort of, I keep running into new people who are becoming psychic very quickly because of what's going on astrologically right now. And they seem yeah. to be floating and I, and it's kind of like, I keep wanting to pull them down. Any tips yeah. for people like that? The, okay. So even though I think the cards are just pieces of paper, we are not. And so we have to keep ourselves in good. And, and I think that there are high vibrations and low vibrations. And I know that sounds hippy dippy woo, but honestly, it's I'm perfect. 43. It's, it's how I live. Yeah, it's I don't perfect. Even, yeah. So we need to keep ourselves at high vibrations. Um, and one of the best ways to keep ourselves there is rocks. I love crystals. I love rocks. Um, I like I was traveling and traveling makes me anxious. So I put some jet in my pockets and a hematite around my neck. And um, all of those are very grounding stones. And they kept me, you know, in my skin. And whether or not it's a, um, well, what is that uh, placebo effect or not, I don't care. It makes me feel better. So I, I like my rocks. But either way, it, it makes you feel better. And if you um, if you meditate before you work or you, or you can, just, like, sit down and imagine tree roots coming out of your, your back and mm-hmm. rooting you into the earth. Or, um, I don't know, I, like, I have a special incense I like to burn when I do readings because it smells good. And so that keeps me in myself. Um, after readings, I stomp the floor and I shake my hands and try to get all the energy off of me sometimes. Right. Drink a lot of water to wash it away. If I have a party, I found if I do like 20 or 30 readings in one night, I eat a big cheeseburger and then I go and get in the tub and I soak because that water dissipates all that energy. Um, So there are lots of, depending on the elements that you're most drawn to, I suppose, you can find, you know, with fire, you can light incense or candles. With water, you can take a bath or a shower or stand in the rain. Um, For earth, you can put your feet in the grass or sit next to a tree or do a meditation that ties you to the earth or put rocks in your pocket. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. Yeah. And it's interesting because, I, and, 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 you know, sometimes like if I'm walking the dog between readings, I will just hold onto a tree and you can yeah. tree holding onto a tree. Like literally I feel it in seconds. I feel better in seconds. And it's funny because, um, I don't eat any meat at all, but the meat is mm-hmm. a grounding. Absolutely. That would be a very, very grounding, um, thing. I never thought of it that way. Um, or you. Almonds work just as well if you eat nuts. Um, that's just as good um, because it's all that protein. No donuts? Your, your food. <laughs> well, donuts, um, not as much protein, but you'll probably feel better because yes. donuts are awesome. At least for a minute. So. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I feel like I just got on the phone with you, and we've been going for 50 minutes. I cannot believe it. W- this is the same That's conversation awesome. when I did your blog. It was the same thing. It was like, did I talk to her for yeah. a minute? We have to meet and hang out. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. I'm planning. I want to come to Los Angeles next year because I have another book coming out, um, and I want to do a book tour. Um, and I, I have a lot of friends in LA. I love it by the way. I'm not from there, but I think it's beautiful and weird and the sun feels weird. I just, I dig it. And you um, can be, but, you can be you, whoever that is with your, whatever, you know, it's yeah, talk it, about being it, accepted. It, yeah. Yeah. The thing I love the most about it when I visit, I was there for like 10 days staying with a friend, uh, by Sapphire beach. And, uh, I did a couple of readings in a bar cause, uh, it was fun. And everyone was like, you're so, um, you're so real. You're so real. And that was the only thing that I noticed that was odd about anything. And I saw a dude, you know, rollerblading in a long dress and, and it was fine. Everything else was fine. Yeah. So the only option is people commenting that I was real. 
And that's not a bad thing. You know? No, it's not at all. And you know what, too? Sometimes it depends where you are. Like, I live in Van Nuys, and uh, we are not the beautiful people in Van Nuys. We're the very real people <laughs> who are trying to stay alive. But, um, yes, if you come out here on a book tour, let me know, because also I have a little show called Psychic Stand-Up. Not a big crowd, but we have a blast, and we could have you as our yeah. uh, as our paranormal guest. But, um, oh, I would love Yes. But folks, the book is called Kitchen Table Tarot. I am in love with it. Uh, it's fantastic. And you can find out more about Melissa at littlefoxtarot.com. And Melissa, you want to tell them anything that's coming up or anything about the classes that are on your webpage? Um, my, I'm, I'm actually relaunching the website September 1st as melissasinova.com, but you can still get to it by Little Fox Tarot. Um, and I will be offering a class that's uh, an hour 40 of me going through the entire book, basically, and just talking about each card. Um, so I'm really excited about that, and that will be up for sale September 1st. And then um, my next book is coming out. It's, it's called Tarot Elements, Five Readings to Reset Your Life, but I wanted it to be called Tarot Elements, Five Readings to Unfuck Your Life, and I said no. <laughs> but it's basically how to reset your life in with your home, your body, your mind, your heart, and your soul. And that's coming out in March. Oh, I can't wait. That sounds terrific. And and this, uh, your new website will probably be up because I believe this is coming out after September 1st. So everybody cool. check it out. Yeah, and it's um, uh, Melissa, let me get the, the uh, M-E-L, uh, this is seriously, I can spell your last name, Melissa, oh. two L's <laughs> or one I know. I'm yeah, so dyslexic. L I S S A. Yeah, one L two S is and the last name is C Y N O V A. Perfect. And Melissa, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Great, great. All right, everybody. Um, you can check out Melissa. We got her website. You can check me out at paranormalkaren.com or karenrontowski.com. You can book a reading there. Book a reading with both of us. You deserve it. Um, you can check out my web series, paranormalkaren.com or paranormalkaren. That's comedy. And, uh, you're listening to the podcast. So that's good. Send me an email. People have been sending me great recommendations for guests. I'm thrilled to hear from you and they have all been good. And I have booked all of them. I'm psyched. Special thanks to Mike at Uno Rising Media. And uh, I hope I didn't. Oh, if you go to my webpage, you can sponsor this podcast. You can either put an ad on it. You could be a secret sponsor or you could be up on my uh, t- um my uh, wall. I have a special wall for sponsors. So uh, that's it, everybody. Have a great day. And remember, when you're given the choice, never choose normal. People are always asking me, Karen, you are so knowledgeable about tarot, ghosts, and otherworldly spirits. How do you stay so organized and grounded here on Earth? And I have to tell them my secret weapon. It's black tourmaline. And Nita over at NitaApple.com. After years of complaining about all the text messages and emails back and forth, trying to schedule tarot readings and chasing after payments, Nita installed Acuity Scheduler on my website, and now I just get a little ding on my phone, and that tells me someone has made an appointment and the money is already in my account. I love that little ding, except every time it goes off, Courage runs to his food bowl. Five minutes with Nita can save you five hours of bumbling around and trying to do things yourself. So if you spend 10 minutes with her, that'll save you like 72 hours or something like that. I don't know. I'm not good with math, but you know who is? Nita. That's who I would ask. Want to end all the emails back and forth and get paid up front when clients schedule time with you? Then hop on over to nitaapple.com backslash services and let Nita get you set up with a simple system that will make your life so much easier. Use coupon code boo for you and get 20% off any products or services. She's got a lot of services and products that can save you time and money. That's boo for you all lowercase B O O the number 4 the letter U and get 20% off. That's Nita Apple at nitaapple.com backslash services. N-I-T-A-A-P-P-L-E dot com backslash services and make your life easier today.